Backup for GKE helps you protect your resources in your GKE clusters, creating critical backups should you ever need to perform a point in time restore to the same cluster or to a new cluster that you've created. So let's take a look at how to enable this. First, we'll want to enable Backup for GKE's API within a Google Cloud project. Backup for GKE is its own managed service with its own API, separate from GKE. With that done, let's jump over to a GKE cluster. We'll start with this cluster named Prod. Now this cluster could hold all sorts of resources, things that can be scoped to the cluster like roles or custom resource definitions, or things scoped to namespaces like stateless workloads and stateful workloads with their respective state stored in persistent volumes. As an example, this cluster is running WordPress in its own namespace with a WordPress pod and a database pod storing data for WordPress using persistent volumes. With Backup for GKE, we can take proactive steps to create backups of these resources. Today, we'll be enabling Backup for GKE in this existing cluster. It's important to note that performing this change is non-disruptive to the resources already running in cluster. But of course, you can also have Backup for GKE enabled at cluster creation time. With this operation now complete, let's take a look at how we can shape our backups using backup plans. When using Backup for GKE, it's highly likely you'll want to perform a backup multiple times over the lifetime of your cluster and your environment. The scope of what each of these individual backups are made up of are defined by a backup plan. So let's create our first. Backup plans map to a specific cluster. So we'll select the cluster we saw earlier, prod. And we're gonna name this our first backup plan. And then we'll want to define what region we want to host our backups in. Next, we want to configure the scope of resources that our backups associated with this backup plan will capture. The scope of each backup plan always includes cluster scope resources, essentially resources that are not scoped to a single namespace. Atop that, we can also choose to backup all namespaces in the cluster and their respective resources. If we want backups to be more granular, we can choose specific namespaces in the cluster to backup, which is especially helpful if our cluster uses namespaces as a logical boundary between either teams or services some of which might need backups and some of which may not. In this case, we can see that we have a WordPress namespace for the WordPress pods we showed earlier. Finally, to perform the most granular backup possible, Backup for GKE introduces a Kubernetes custom resource called a protected application. You can use this to group together a specific set of resources in a namespace to backup. And you can also specify logic to run pre or post backup. To learn more about how to compose a protected application manifest, check out the link in the description. As you can see, we can specify this protected application method in our backup plan. But for our first backup, let's just capture the entire cluster. Now that we've gotten the scope settled, the next important aspect of our backup plan is what specific resources and data to capture. By default, within the scope of the backup plan, we capture all resource definitions in Kubernetes except secrets. You'll need to opt into that explicitly in your backup plan if you want them included. Separate from Kubernetes resource definitions, we also perform backups of data stored using persistent volumes. For example, if you're using GCE persistent disk to store data that your workload produces, Backup for GKE will perform volume snapshots to capture the underlying disk state at the time of backup. Finally, by default, we will encrypt the backup using a Google Managed Encryption Key, but you can also specify your own Customer Managed Encryption Key to be used. Now, while you can manually perform a backup based on a backup plan at any time, you can also specify a cron expression to perform backups automatically on a regular cadence. For example, this cron expression here specifies a backup to be performed based on this backup plan every day at 3 p.m. UTC. And since we're using a regular schedule to perform backups, we also need to define what's called a retention policy. This will specify how long backups are retained before they are deleted. In this case, we'll set it to 30 days. You can also use retention policies to prevent deletion of backups for a time to protect against things like malicious user deletion or ransomware attacks. 
you can also lock down the editing of this retention policy once the backup plan is created. And after one final review, we're ready to create our first backup plan. Now that it's created, our cluster will have regular backups captured based on this backup plan. And while we hope we never have to, should there be an event where we need to perform a restore of our cluster's resources, we can use these backups to implement a point in time restore. To learn more about getting started with Backup for GKE, check out the documentation in the description. And as always, thank you for your time.